Citing two people familiar with the matter, Reuters reported on Sunday local time that President Donald Trump has given Chinese ByteDance, the parent company of popular short video application TikTok, 45 days to negotiate the sale of the app to Microsoft, practically giving approval of the merger. Such a comment goes somewhat against from what Trump's previous claims that TikTok under its current Beijing-based parent company poses a national risk. We're looking at TikTok. We may be banning TikTok. We may be doing some other things. There are a couple of options, but a lot of things are happening. So we'll see what happens. But, but following a discussion between Trump and Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella, the U.S. tech company said it intends to acquire TikTok from ByteDance by September 15th. We start with the big story and tensions have reignited between Israel and Hamas after the two sides carried out airstrikes for the first time since the first week of July. On Sunday, the Israeli army accused Hamas of launching a projectile towards Israel territory. The rocket was reportedly intercepted by Israel's Iron Dome anti-rocket system. The attack set off sirens in Israel's southern district of Shar, but no casualties were reported. Israeli Air Force carried out retaliatory strikes on Hamas facilities in the Gaza Strip. Underground facilities and factories in central and southern Gaza were targeted by the Israeli Defense Forces. At least 21 people have been killed and 42 others injured in an attack on a prison in eastern Afghanistan. Officials say there were several explosions, including a suicide car bomb outside the prison in the city of Jalalabad. Afghan security forces are locked in a gun battle with the attackers. Several prisoners escaped during the fighting. ISIL claimed responsibility. Uh, well, so the responsibility of the attack has been claimed by the Islamic State, and it's believed that you have a vast amount of um, Daesh or ISL uh, members who are imprisoned in this very prison. So if Daesh has taken responsibility, the primary motive could be to make sure that to sort of release um, their prisoners. The Philippine Army plans to acquire light scout boats, assault boats, and support boats for its riverine operations equipment acquisition project under the Armed Forces of the Philippines Modernization Program Horizon 2. According to NavyRecognition.com, the Philippine government requested to buy 36 units of 9-meter scout boats, 36 units of 10-meter assault boats, and 18 units of 16-meter light support boats. There are also some armaments included in the request, such as 156 units of 7.62mm machine guns, 24 units of 50 caliber machine guns, and 36 units of 7.62mm, 6-barrel rotary Gatling guns. Also included are the sensors, radios, infrared cameras, spare parts, 
and rescue equipments, amounting to 6.3 billion pesos all in all. Although this is only a potential sale, as the Philippine Department of National Defense has not awarded any contract yet to the United States company. South Korea is about to begin the legal process to seize local assets of a Japanese firm that refused to compensate the South Korean victims of wartime forced labor. In October 2018, South Korea's top court ordered Japan's Nippon Steel to compensate four South Koreans who were forced into labor by Japan during World War II. But the company refused to comply, saying the issues were already settled in a 1965 agreement that normalized ties between Seoul and Tokyo. So a South Korean court in June ordered the seizure of local assets of PNR, one of the Japanese steelmakers' joint ventures in South Korea, and the process for the asset freeze is supposed to begin on August 4th. Now this could raise even more tensions between South Korea and Japan, whose diplomatic ties have already been strained due to the ongoing trade war since last year. Two years after the Morandi Bridge collapsed in the Italian city of Genoa, killing 43 people, a new bridge will be inaugurated later on today. The new high-tech structure was designed by famed Italian architect Renzo Piano and has advanced safety mechanisms. Well, it's a day of mixed emotions here in Genoa. The families of the 43 victims who were killed when the Morandi Bridge collapsed two years ago don't want to have anything to do with this inauguration ceremony. Uh, they say there's nothing to celebrate. This is a day of shame for them. And even though the names of each victim will be read out at the ceremony and there will be a few moments silence to honour their memory, they don't want to have anything to do with it. A fatal shark attack off the coast of Maine has swimmers on edge all along the eastern seaboard. It happened near a popular holiday spot just off the mainland and not all that far from Canada. Investigators confirm it was a great white shark. Recent sightings of great whites in northern Atlantic waters indicate its population is on the rise. But as Ross Lord reports, scientists argue the vulnerable species has been unfairly demonized. When a woman was attacked and killed Monday while swimming with her daughter, it was shocking. Even more so when officials in the Maine community of Harpswell identified the attacker. Authorities say 63-year-old Julie Demperio Hollowak was wearing a black wetsuit. They suspect the great white might have mistaken her for a seal. ESCOM and the Special Investigating Unit have issued summons in the North Gauteng High Court in an attempt to recoup some of the power utilities looted billions. It's alleged that about 3.8 billion rand was illegally diverted from ESCOM. The power utility is pointing fingers at 12 people, including former CEO Brian Malefe, former acting CEO Matsila Koko, and former CFO Anoj Singh. Former Mineral Resources Minister Musarin Zizwane and the Gupta brothers are also named in this matter. It was held up as an example of best practice in tackling COVID-19. Vietnam imposed strict antivirus measures and closed its borders even before its first case was diagnosed. Infections were kept low and there were no deaths. There was no local transmission for more than three months. An airline pilot from the UK spent two months in a coma but recovered. But then everything changed. Vietnam has seen a rapid resurgence of COVID-19 with its first deaths and a spike of infections at the coastal resort of Da Nang after citizens were encouraged to resume domestic travel. Da Nang has been placed in total lockdown, but Vietnam says up to 800,000 visitors to the city have returned to other parts of the country in the past month, sparking fears new outbreaks could appear anywhere.